guys, we're at Scythe now at CompuTech 2025. A couple things to talk about. There's some coolers to talk about, but also some of the news that you probably saw in headlines about Scythe's Europe branch. So we have some commentary from Scythe about that to answer some of the questions where the headline was basically about the European branch closing. So I talked to them about that. We'll cover that today. In terms of products, we're going to go over. They have a liquid cooler that they're experimenting with. To my knowledge, this is Scythe's first liquid cooler. Uh, Kitagawa-san, the lead designer at Scythe, was telling us how he basically spent the last year specifically studying liquid coolers. And so this is what he's come up with for a first mock-up where one of the things they want to do is include these. Currently, these are 3D printed prototypes. Uh, basically, I don't know, a peg, I guess, with a piece of tape on the back. And so then you can stick that to any fan you want. And we'll, we'll have to drop B-roll on it because I'm using a mic here. But that can then socket on top of the cooler here. It can be angled slightly because it is just like a, a peg and socket type of thing. And then the idea being that you can point a bunch more air down at the VRM or the RAM or whatever. You could technically use, I mean, if you have room for a 200, I guess you could do that. Might be a little wobbly, but that's what they're playing around with the liquid coolers. The air coolers, there's not a ton new except for, uh, so the Magoroku, which we showed last year, is coming out now. So this is just about done. That's supposed to be $50, but they might be able to bring it down, they're saying, to $44 US, depending on uh, sort of market conditions. And then the Mugen 6 Tough, which is an Asus sort of color themed and branded version of the Mugen 6. And that will start us off for Scythe. Oh, and they also have the Big Shuriken 4, which we showed last year, but is now just about final as well. And this one has the cutouts in the side of the fan, which they say helps performance. And we talked about that uh, last year, where it allows some room for the fan, for the air to escape out of there. So let's get into it. Before that, this video is brought to you by Thermalrite and the Frozen Prism 360 liquid cooler. Thermalrite's Frozen Prism is one of the most affordable liquid coolers on the market and is able to achieve competitive results with a high cold plate convexity that applies pressure centrally to the silicon area based on our testing. This works on both AMD and Intel. We previously benchmarked the Frozen Prism and found that it's overall competitive for its price point. The cooler comes in a few color variations, it has a blackout option and an RGB option, and it's the cheapest liquid cooler we've tested anytime recently that still hits performance markers. Learn more at the link in the description below. So for the Magoroku, this is supposed to be a relatively high performing, sort of mid-range, budget-ish cooler at that, like I said, $44 point. They're going with a flat nickel-plated copper cold plate. It's six heat pipes, so there's six six mil pipes. They're using two of the Wonder Tornado fans, as they call them. So these are 25 mil thick fans. They're two by 120s for these. And uh, otherwise, pretty familiar cooler. I mean, you use the metal brackets to adjust the fan height. It's, it's, there's nothing really too crazy about how it's put together. For the prototype here, so this is actually pretty interesting. If you look closely at those heat pipes, you'll see those have like basically zero distance between them at the bottom. They kind of converge into one just <laughs> basically a plate, but it's still direct touch heat pipes. And so there's a couple ways to do heat pipes where you could either form a plate around them, which normally just looks like a flat nickel plated copper plate, or they could do direct touch. Normally with direct touch though, you'll still see a gap form between the base where it might be like a fraction of a millimeter, but it'll be a small gap, it'll dent upwards, and then the paste helps fill that. So by polishing this down, uh, they are chewing into some of the heat pipe area to get them all uniform and uh, getting them to minimize the gap between them, which should improve the thermal performance in theory. Now, one of the things Seisler is telling us is that apparently this is a little bit cheaper from a manufacturing standpoint and also therefore should help them fight on price with companies like Thermal, right? Which is causing everybody problems right now, uh, which I guess is good for consumers because it drives price down, but allows them to fight on price a little better versus doing something like a nickel plated copper cold plate where there's a lot more process involved, there's more factories involved to do that plating. Uh, and so it's supposed to simplify things, what they were telling us. The performance, it sounds like, is mostly the same under certain conditions. So there's some situations where it can be better or worse. It depends on the heat load and the amount of heat pipes. And there's too many caveats to really get into all that, but those are the basics. Uh, the Big Shrunken 4, they just had one audience question, and otherwise I'll point you to our coverage last year for more information on it. So the only question from Scythe is all black or ARGB? And I think they will actually read the comments because they've done that in the past. So if you want to leave your comments as to what your preference is, that'll probably help them make a, a choice. <laughs> please don't please don't guide them the wrong direction. I'm trusting the audience on this. The liquid cooler, I, I've, there's a couple more things I want to say about this. So first of all, 
the working name for this cooler is Psycopter, which is real f***ing cool. So Psycopter is a combination of Scythe, and I guess there's your copter part. Um, for information we got, this is all prototype right now. All of this can change. So I'm really clear about that. The radiator thickness is pretty standard. It's 27 millimeters for the current version. They might change that. The uh, fan is just whatever. It's whatever you want to mount to it. They're going to have a cover plate as well. So if you don't want a fan mounted to it, then you can just cover it off like a standard pump block. Uh, the impeller, I think, if I understood the translation correctly, was about a 32 millimeter impeller that they're using internally. And then the material for the impeller specifically, as I understand it, is made in Japan, so the, just specifically the material for the impeller, not the whole thing. And uh, that is supposed to be, it translated as like magnetic plastic. I, the, my best guess on that is is something to do with the electromagnet for the impeller. You can let me know in the comments. I'm not a materials expert. Uh, so if ma magnetic plastic means anything to you, please teach me what it is. Um, for the fins, so the micro fins, the pitch is 0 0.1 millimeters. They're, that makes them pretty close together. Uh, it is done with a skiving process, pretty standard for an AIO solution where it comes in and pushes and forms the micro fins. Oh, actually, this was kind of fun. So whenever we talk to Scythe, I have a lot of fun because we're going through three languages. So uh, we go through normally Mandarin to Japanese, back to Mandarin to English. And it ended up being easier to just draw it. So, so I got a pen. And my question was, Lee and Lee says their gap between the bottom of the microfins and the bottom of the cold plate, which is this number here. Lee and Lee is making a, they're talking big game about 0 0.3 millimeters for their new cooler. Upside, better performance. Downside, a little more malleable, can be misshapen. And uh, so they're gonna have to work on tuning the rigidity and the resilience of it. So for that metric on the Psycopter, there's 0 0.5 millimeters, which is much more standard. Uh, it's a little safer on the reliability standpoint, but still should get pretty good or typical performance of an AIO. Um, and then otherwise, oh, and then the total height of the copper cold plate is 1.6 millimeters, as you can see here. So I think that just about covers it. Um, the direct touch heat pipe model, so this is gonna be the Shinkai is what it's called, which is also a, the name of a knife maker from what I understand. And I think that covers all the products. Now on the Europe thing, so I, I don't have a lot of information, but the basics I got were Scythe closed the Europe branch, so they confirmed that. Uh, the I think the thing that everyone was jumping to in the headlines was, oh, Scythe, are they going out of business? Is it okay? So the answer I got was they're basically closing that branch. I think I would call it restructuring maybe would be kind of the, the businessy word. Uh, reforming it, they're still shipping to and selling to European customers. They found a new uh, solution to continue doing that and they're gonna bring some of the operations to Taiwan. So that is my current understanding of it. I think it's basically a reorg, where it's like, let's let's bring some of this to home base, uh, where Kitagawa-san actually works from here as well in Taiwan. So I think that's where we're at. And we'll try and get some more information later, but it sounds like it's, it's kind of your classic corporate move things around. That'll be it for Sites Booth. Uh, very interested in the liquid cooler just because the name's, it's a, it's a good name. I gotta give them credit better than Wonder Snail and Wonder Tornado. So that's it for this one. Subscribe for more, go to store.gamersaccess.net or patreon.com slash gamersaccess helps out directly. And we will see you all next time.